Prince Edward Island, it's a land of fertile soil, right? So what does fall harvest look like? Hello and welcome to On The Move. We are Matt and Betsy and we are on an adventure to explore uh, Prince Edward Island. We've moved here recently and we're starting to set up our home. You might see behind us there's still some cracks we're filling in the walls. It's an ongoing process. It will be for a while. But right now we are at the end of September and we are right in the middle of fall harvest. Mm -hmm. So we've been enjoying some of the bounty of that here in Prince Edward Island. We wanted to share some of that with you today. We, um, I guess we found, first of all, where we came from, harvest was more like end of August through September. Yeah, maybe. I think everything here is shifted by at least two bit. weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're like, seeing things like corn for sure. Yeah, still. A little bit later. Yeah, in, in okay. where we came from, you wouldn't be getting sweet corn anymore, no. but there's still some, some, out. some, yeah. some of that out yeah. there. Although we haven't made use of the sweet corn. I think. Well, I was so worried about getting it before we left that we had a few good feasts of it. So I just, I will next year, but. Yeah, you're yeah. like a one time. I, I kind of am. One, one, or, one or two times. One boil and yeah. then you're, you're done. And then I'm good for the season. Mm -hmm. What I've enjoyed is uh, what you will find all over the place in Prince Edward Island are little pop-up stands where people from their home gardens perhaps, or maybe they collect from a few places, they will um, they'll display their their bounty yeah. and offer it up for sale at the side of the road. So I, I passed quite a few of those on my way to work and I've mm -hmm. enjoyed checking a few of them out. I found a source for eggs, which I guess is not really fall harvest. but uh, No, but it's yeah. just nice. It's fun to be able to support our neighbors in our community mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. So for sure. Yeah. And you, you were actually the first one to visit. Wow. I did. I stopped at one and discovered, of course, because a lot of them are operating on the honor system, which I should have known ahead of time, um, you need to have exact change <laughs> because there's nobody there to, to make change for you. So I did stop, but I didn't actually get anything that day because I just didn't have the, the right amount of money. Yeah. I was looking at, I think they were new Irish potatoes, I think. Uh, Irish like cobbler. Irish cobbler, the, that's right. The, the type the here. That were, yeah. Yeah. They have, was, they, often they have like a... A box, you know, thank yeah. you written on it where you put your money in might be locked, although some of them are not. Actually, oh. I went to one, the one where I get my my eggs from. Um, it's an open box, so you could make change. Oh, if you yeah, no. To there. These potatoes I guess there's definitely was a varying box. levels of trust, of trust about that. that go with them. Yeah. But thinking about potatoes, because uh, we live, uh, we are mostly surrounded by potatoes. In At some, least this yeah, year. In They're, some way. We're yeah. surrounded by lots of fields, yeah. and so mm -hmm. there's a variety of them, but I've seen potatoes come out beside us, behind us, and in front of us. So yeah. definitely there's potato fields around. And there have been potatoes going on probably since about the middle of August yes. through until this is probably the height of potato season we're right guessing. now yeah. at the end of September. Because we're seeing them go by like in the truck loads. Yeah, like giant transport yeah. truck loads. Of and these ones out. that are coming out, my understanding is these are the ones that have contracts like with Cavendish um, and who else? There was another one. Frito-Lay. Frito-Lay, yeah. yeah. Potato chips. Um, so these ones are specifically for French fries yeah. and chips mm -hmm. and stuff. So they're a larger mm -hmm. variety. Most of them are quite big. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Growing up, my uncles who are farmers and um, they they farm things like uh, corn, soybean, wheat. But not sweet corn. No, no, and yeah. exactly. So it's not it's not a direct consumer or even direct to the processing. Mm -hmm. It goes through various stages and is used for a bunch of things. So I never knew. Maybe maybe they did. I'd have to ask my uncles, but I never knew to them to sell direct to some big food company like Cavendish, Fries, so, yeah. or McCain's out here, but not quite as much on the island or Frito Lay. Yeah. Also, but we're learning, we learn lots from our yeah. neighbors. I think it's fun to know, you know where your food is going right. exactly. Yeah, and, and it's that. it's food, it's fun to have this food that's coming out of the ground that is immediately consumable. Yeah. Um, it doesn't yeah. have to be processed, processed at all. Yeah, can, exactly, yeah. yeah. So potatoes have been kind of like the ones directly around us here that we've been enjoying and our neighbor George keeps educating us about yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm finding it fascinating cuz yeah. so we we George allows us to walk around the property, um, the property yeah. and I noticed very quickly actually I think our daughter our youngest daughter noticed first 
that there were there were all sorts of potatoes still in the field. Even so first of all, I should tell you a little bit how potato harvest looks. Oh yeah. So I woke up the one morning and there are I think there was three large tractors, all with these like massive pieces behind them that I I know enough about farming. I knew it was gonna pull the, the potatoes out. There's like layers of conveyor belts on them. And then yeah, and then there was another. So there's the three tractors pulling the I don't know what they're called, but the the uh, whatever is going to take potato out of the potato ground. Potato harvesters. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll call it the harvester. And then there's, um, yeah, this other one that follows along behind that's a conveyor belt that the potatoes go up and then they go up again. And while it's going, it's kind of rattling gently. And so all the dirt's falling out. And then at the top, there's another big massive truck that the stuff is getting ramped into or gently placed into is our understanding yes. we'll explain that in a minute and then they fill these trucks up with i don't know tons literally tons yeah. of potatoes thousands of tons yeah of and potatoes. then off they drive down the highway and i think they operated most of them it was three or four trucks would be there and they would just wait to be filled and then they would leave and then they would fill the next one and then off they'd go yeah. and uh, so it's quite the, the operation to see it happen and they'll they would do a field in a day um, for sure. We saw some get yeah. stalled, but who knows? That might have mm-hmm. been breakdown or something yeah. of that sort. Um, and I gather yeah. from talking yeah. to George that I'm sure this is the case of much farming, that the equipment just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, it doesn't. it's still not the size of a southwestern Ontario combine. Yeah, or more but, even more so out west, right? Yeah, they have no, even no. Bigger not ones, not no. quite like that. But still, no, no. to us little people walking along beside it, it's, it's pretty big. Yeah, their, their fields, like... A 50-acre field, 30 to 50 acres is probably average. They kind of section things off. That, so yeah. they would they would clear a field like that probably in a morning. Mm-hmm. Or that, that yeah. thing. I mean, we let, we I keep going down bunny trails here. We saw, George, again, um, unexpectedly, everything worked out timing-wise. So, like, within two days, he after the potatoes are out, he tilled it under, and then he readied it for his next um, uh, next oh, seeding, really which I think was probably wheat or barley that went right. in. And then he put it all in, like all within one weekend. And oh, you forget the part about the fact that he actually had a team come in and grade well, the field. Oh, that's true. Because yeah, he was he having did. washout issues, yeah. mm-hmm. as well as forming like a, yeah. it's like a ditch kind of furrow thing for the water to pass through freely yeah. so it would stop yeah. wiping out the fields. And Hard-working stuff. farmers out here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we've totally gone down bunny trail. So with the potatoes, so this this has got this crew has gone through. They've left, and then our daughter's out wandering around, having her fun in the evening. And she's like, "Mom, there's potatoes all over the place." Yeah. So we had to ask George <laughs> what's, about what's this. With what's with all going these on? leftover potatoes? What happens? What's yeah. what's going on here? Mm-hmm. So he. I, I love the way he explained it. He uh, actually explained it to you. But, uh, so you can roll a potato as far as you want, apparently, which is why they have these conveyor belt things. They roll them and they get the dirt yeah. off and that sort of thing. But, but you drop, just don't drop them. Yeah, you drop a potato, it's no good. They yeah. they won't pick them up again. They're, no. They'll just get tilled under. Because my understanding is as soon as it gets bruised, then it's prone to rot, and the rot will affect yeah. the whole batch. So yeah. Cavendish especially does not want them in the yeah. warehouse with rotting. Otherwise, it can infect the whole, the yeah. whole lot of them. Yeah. Um, so you just have to be careful with these potatoes because you don't want to send ones that are already bruised and, mm-hmm. and rotted. You need to... I think we've, we've sort of figured out you need to stay good um, with your, your big contracts. Yeah, otherwise they'll, they don't they penalize you, you or they drop you. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the big companies are pretty particular. They're pretty picky about their Not potatoes. only that, but he was talking temperature. And I won't even yeah. explain that because no, I don't, don't fully understand. But like what your potato to temperatures, and, yeah. And even during transport, yeah. like making sure you're not taking them out on too hot of a day because they yeah. can't get too high mm-hmm. in temperature. Yeah, so I mean... Yeah. All you good farmers are probably laughing at us because I'm sure every crop and every yeah. farming has its yeah. particularities and its details. But this is new to us, so we're enjoying the process of learning it. Yeah. So, so that's when we can just roll those potatoes, just don't drop them. That's right. <laughs> so potatoes, and then we have enjoyed uh, some squash. There's lots of like of the squash pumpkin variety. Mm-hmm. More out than there. I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. One. Yeah. One that we actually we had one. There's one over. Anyway, grab it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> We we had one of these. We had to because of the name of it. So they call this. This is a mashed potato. Mashed potato squash. Yeah. Okay. And 
It's exactly because the name is exactly so I'm named that way because of what you think it is. So I'm cooking up a nice country meal. I did some meat, some potatoes, and some squash for us one evening. Only I didn't think about the fact that the mashed potato squash tastes a heck of a lot. Like mashed potatoes. <laughs> like mashed potatoes. <laughs> like if you'd been served those and like if you yeah. really, you know, blended them up a bit, whipped them a bit, yeah. and you weren't told anything about it with a bit of butter. Yeah. So I don't know all know. my my keto and my paleo and my vegetarian or whatever, but I don't know. Sometimes I know that white potatoes are frowned upon, so maybe you could switch it out for a mashed potato mashed squash. Mashed potato squash. Yeah. <laughs> so that was I, one of the. I eat it ones. all. <laughs> so I'm I th that's probably been the most exciting yeah. so far. I'm interested to try some other. We have varieties. another one. Do you remember what it was called that we picked up? Mm. It's right there. Can't remember. It's I don't know if you know what that is right there. Maybe we can, can look us. it up and. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can tell us that'll work too. It was mm -hmm. on the the label at the stand, yeah. but I can't remember now. Yes. Nope. And uh, lots of interesting things. Yeah. Cucamelons, which they're these little things. They look like if you know what a kumquat is, small orange-like things. They look that size and shape, but they look, they're more like greenish, like a cucumber or watermelon. We didn't actually pick them up to try them. Yeah, well, she yeah. said they're like a sour cucumber, which didn't appeal to me yeah. at the moment, yeah. but still interesting things. Yeah. And I love to try the interesting so things. So lots of different vegetables. Oh, we've gotten carrots. You picked up carrots. Yes, carrots have been good. The and, as well. And I've been seeing, so on my drives, carrots is another one that's a big harvest mm -hmm. here. There are giant transport truckloads of carrots. That yeah, go I'm not seeing them in our immediate. A little bit further north from but us. But because he does significant travel for work, he's yeah. covering a good portion of the island. <laughs> so there's quite a bit so of carrots that come yeah, out of the earth there too. Going on. Mm -hmm. And they're delicious. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing that we've done, and I think yes. we will do again yes, because sure. of where we went, and I got some yeah. photos we'll show here too. We went apple picking. Which we did in Ontario. We, yes, yes, yeah, there's, there's lots um, of apples. But we just wanted to, we tried mm -hmm. to make it a tradition with our family to go apple picking at least once in each fall. Um, so we wanted to find a place out here that would allow us to do that. And we found a delightful place. Very nice. It yeah. was, and so this is the start yeah. of apple season yes, here. Yes, just the start. Yeah. Do you remember the name of the place we went? Um, I, I'll put it put down. It I'll, okay, I'll put it sorry. We did get better for having our names prepared. I know. Um, it was like well kept super it was super clean. tidy yeah. someone must be going and like cleaning yeah. up any dropped apples on a daily basis mm -hmm. um because the ground was was beautifully clear um they keep it well cut it's well yeah. organized everything yeah. was beautifully labeled trees are at a great height, height too to be able they to reach looks pick. like when they get too yeah. big they just cut them down and start yeah. new with them yeah so i was yeah. really enjoying it it's given yeah. us some inspiration maybe next spring we'll put a few in ourselves and yes. give it a try we we'll wanted see. to try yeah. for a while now mm -hmm. yeah yeah so we got a few four varieties of apples the ones that were available right now yes. you know, as if you know apples they sort of different ones come available at different From times of like the season. late august up to yeah. late october but not here not late august here really they only just started at just the end started of september. september yeah or for here and they'll go through until the first of november, november. i saw okay. oh all right so, so we'll have to go see. back and get some more was, apples. they also gave us a sheet that was lovely too that described the taste but also the ones that had um like good shelf life and those that did not so some that were recommended mm -hmm. for taking and either eating right away or baking with which matthew yeah. made a lovely apple pie that we were able to share with some neighbors um from the ones that said they wouldn't keep so but they were delicious for for putting in pie so yeah, yeah we're having fun with girls are eating up apples like crazy <laughs> i'm okay with that i'm always pushing them to eat more fruits and vegetables so. apple a day <laughs> it's not a bad idea no mm -hmm. no so uh, if you're coming and you're coming in the fall to mm -hmm. Prince Edward Island, so I'm the talking... Shoulder season. This, the shoulder season. Yeah, September would be the shoulder season yeah. we're learning. And as you get into October... We'll start, well, we've learned maybe they're even starting to push, getting more happening in October. A little bit, yeah, yeah. But places are starting. Some places will shrink their hours. So there's food festivals going on. Yes, yeah. Fairs, yeah. The I've... fall food festival is happening yeah. right now. And a little bit modified because, because of... of COVID. COVID, yeah. we're still in the middle yeah. of that, but it's still going ahead, which is nice for people. Here. Not everything has been able to amp up as much as they would yeah. like. And I do know of a few festivals that were still mm -hmm. sort of held off till next year that they're looking forward to being able to have, um, again, just because of COVID getting in the way. But they really are still continuing to try to have activities and events that are happening here during September and October, because it's just... 
I'm anticipating it's going to be so gorgeous because there's a lot of trees around. It already um, is. And We're starting gonna to see change. They're mm -hmm. going to change color. Yeah. yeah. Out back, as we look out our window, we can see there's a few back in the bush that are just starting. Yeah. A little red one here, an orange one there. Yeah. So, it, but. In a couple of weeks, I'm sure it'll all be a gorgeous flame of autumn colors. So fall in PEI, come for the beautiful nature, yeah. come for the beautiful food, and I'm sure you won't be disappointed.